Okay, let's say you have a small kitchen, or you're a minimalist, or you're just cooking for two people. What are some essential cookware or kitchen buys that you should get? Let's dive in. This was actually a user request. So I wanted to thank that user, but basically I overlooked this completely. So I'm glad you suggested it. Not everybody has a huge kitchen or has a desire to buy all this kitchen cookware and tools if they're not necessarily gonna use it. Maybe they're a minimalist or they have a really small area, small apartment, studio apartment, whatever. Or maybe they're just cooking for two. So this video is gonna be all about some essential things that I think you should buy if you're a minimalist. Now, I also really want to stress, everything that I'm recommending today is also designed for a maximum of two, maybe three people. Maybe like two people and a kid or something like that. So for example, if you think you need a larger skillet or a pot, please, upscale. So let's talk stovetops. I think if you're a minimalist or you're cooking for two, a great stovetop to consider buying is an induction stovetop. And the induction stovetop that I've always recommended is made by Duxtop. It's not the strongest stovetop out there, but it does a great job. It's reliable and it's still kicking for me. And I've been using it for at least five years. It does have a small coil, so it is limited to a 10 inch skillet or less, which is perfect because this video is designed for cooking for two or less. And a 10 inch skillet is plenty for two people. Now let's say you already have a stove and you're happy with it. A portable induction stovetop or the next item I'm going to recommend, which is a portable gas burner, still great to have because you can take it outside and cook some meals or cook things that you know are going to smoke up the house or reduce heat in the house, especially if you have a small area, still a good buy. If a portable induction stovetop is not your thing, then I really highly recommend this portable gas burner made by Grill Boss, and it does feature a very unique design where it can accept dual fuel sources. You can take propane gas canisters or it has a hose that hooks up to a one gallon propane tank. Let's move on to skillets. I really think you should have two types of skillets. I think you should have a cast iron and a stainless steel skillet and that should take care of most of your needs. And I also think that both of them should be 10 inch skillets. That's pretty much the optimal size. And I'll be honest with you guys, most of the time I reach for my 10 inch skillets. I hardly use my 12 inch skillets because I'm usually cooking with two different pans, but having a stainless steel and a cast iron pan, you should be good to go. Cast iron is naturally nonstick once it's seasoned and stainless steel can literally take a beating, take anything and develop great fond for sauces. Now you're gonna need a knife and a cutting board. And if you can only have one knife, I highly recommend a chef's knife because it can do anything. And most of the time a chef's knife is gonna cover like 90% of your cutting needs. You can't beat the Victorian Ox. It's really, really good. It's a great beater. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some great knives out there. The Bob Kramer carbon steel knife is great. Dell Strong is a great, really well marketed Chinese brand knife that offers pretty good value, but they're really expensive. If you decide you want a better knife later on, then great. But the Victoria Knox is used as a standard default kitchen knife in kitchens all over the world. And it does a great job. As far as cutting boards are concerned, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't have a recommendation right now on camera. I gotta do a little bit more research. I'm having a hard time deciding between a wood cutting board or one of those like plastic ones that you'd find at any fast food restaurant because they do hold up really well and they're a lot cheaper. I think Costco sells one that's really large, like Costco business centers. You may or may not need that size, but long story short, let me think about it and I'll put a link in the description below. A really simple thing, but I think it goes a long way is having a garlic press. A lot of recipes call for garlic. Having a garlic press is just gonna enhance your food. And then likewise, having like a spice rack or spice cabinet, something like that. Start off with the basics, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, maybe some rosemary, maybe some thyme, maybe a little bit of paprika, smoked paprika. And I would get maybe like a steak seasoning just to start off, but that should get you going. The majority of the time, salt, garlic powder, and black pepper is really the base of everything. And then adding some garlic is a good thing. And also having some red wine vinegar or white wine vinegar would be a good idea, especially when you're making sauces out of fond, and likewise some chicken stock or beef stock. 
just to, you know, make some creative things later on. Now, I can't necessarily give you like a detailed list. Obviously, you're going to need like butter or cooking oil. If you are looking for my recommendations for oil, 90% of the time I'm using olive oil and avocado oil. Those are my two go to favorites. I do have some butter, usually as a thickening or flavoring agent, but I also use ghee as well. If you guys are interested, watch my video on searing a steak using ghee. He is my secret weapon, but I can't go over everything, right? I'm just giving you guys some essentials. So the next essential is getting a stock pot, either a five and a half quart or a six quart. I recommend the Duck's Top three ply stock pot. I did a review on it like a couple years back, but it's an actual three ply and it's fantastic. And it comes in at a pretty good price. If you can though, if you think you can manage the weight and the size, nothing beats an enameled cast iron Dutch oven six quart, five quart, five and a half quart, whatever you can afford. And you have many different choices out there. You have a large cast iron Dutch oven or you have Amazon basics. And I've had the Amazon basics for at least three years now. We've had no issues. The coating's still intact. It's wonderful. A Dutch oven just mimics underground cooking so well. There's a million things you can make with it. Now, if you're interested in a couple of appliances, some appliances that will help you or aid in helping you cook, but you're kind of limited on space. Can't go wrong with the sous vide. And I'm not talking about like an all-in-one sous vide. I'm talking about the aggravator, the single unit that you clip onto a pot. You don't want to need a tank. You can clip it onto your Dutch oven or your stainless steel stock pot if you decide to go with that. But if you wanted to get a container, which has dual purposes, you can buy a plastic container as well. A sous vide is a great device for a minimalist. You can literally cook like six steaks if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but six steaks in a container, let's say you're having a party, and sous vide will cook them all to perfection, and all you gotta do is sear it on your cast iron skillet. Going a bit larger, you could also get like an air fryer or one of those like air fryer ovens. And I think having like an actual oven per se than like let's say a microwave is a good idea because microwaves tend to dry out your food. You can get away with that by getting like a towel and wetting it, squeezing out the water and putting it over the food, keeping the moisture in or adding some of the moisture back in. But you know, if you wanted to get like an actual tabletop or countertop oven or air fryer combo, it's a good way to go. But I think as far as appliances go, I think a sous vide and an air fryer are probably your best bet. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Suggest some more in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody.